Hello, everyone, and welcome to the CyberWire's Research Saturday, presented by Juniper Networks. I'm Dave Bittner, and this is our weekly conversation with researchers and analysts, tracking down threats and vulnerabilities, and solving some of the hard problems of protecting ourselves in a rapidly evolving cyberspace. Thanks for joining us. And now a word about our sponsor, Juniper Networks. Organizations are constantly evolving and increasingly turning to multi-cloud to transform IT. Juniper's connected security gives organizations the ability to safeguard users, applications, and infrastructure by extending security to all points of connection across the network. Helping defend you against advanced threats, Juniper's connected security is also open so you can build on the security solutions and infrastructure you already have. Secure your entire business from your endpoints to your edge and every cloud in between with Juniper's connected security. Connect with Juniper on Twitter or Facebook. And we thank Juniper for making it possible to bring you Research Saturday. And thanks also to our sponsor, Enveil, whose revolutionary zero-reveal solution closes the last gap in data security, protecting data in use. It's the industry's first and only scalable commercial solution enabling data to remain encrypted throughout the entire processing life cycle. Imagine being able to analyze, search, and perform calculations on sensitive data all without ever decrypting anything, all without the risks of theft or inadvertent exposure. What was once only theoretical is now possible with Enveil. Learn more at Enveil.com. I had been examining payloads that were directed at Magento. I was doing this because I was researching the Magecart credit card skimming campaign. That's Larry Cashdollar. He's a senior intelligence response engineer at Akamai. The research we're discussing today is titled, Think PHP Exploit Actively Exploited in the Wild. And I noticed a payload that wasn't specific to Magento, but it was something called Think PHP. And I, I hadn't heard of it before, so I started to dig into it a little more. and. It, looking at the payloads in the get request that appear to be a code injection vulnerability, I wasn't familiar with it. So I decided to, to investigate and dig into it more and do a little bit of research on it. And then saw a vulnerability had been disclosed in Think PHP in only, a, I think, a few weeks prior. And I was looking at the IP addresses that the malicious requests were coming from. And a lot of them really originated in the Asia Pacific region. So I just started to take notes and start writing things down and started noticing that the, the payloads were varying and decided to start writing this up. Let's go through it. I mean, this, this is a fairly uh, technical one here. There's a lot of different things that you uncovered. So why don't we walk through it together? Shall we start with this Think PHP element that you discovered? Someone, a researcher in, I believe it was in China, area or region, he disclosed a remote code execution vulnerability in this ThinkPHP framework. This ThinkPHP is a framework that was developed by TopThink, a Chinese software company. And the guy who, who discovered the vulnerability had disclosed it as an issue on GitHub. And it appears that the folks at, at TopThink quickly fixed the, the vulnerability, but a lot of, I'd say, bad actors had already started abusing it or looking for it in the wild. And what I had really noticed was a lot of widespread scanning for it. So what I originally found was a request that was looking to see if ThinkPHP was there, and then it was looking to inject a simple request to execute PHP code. And the code that it was executing was just an MD5 sum of a string of numbers. And if it got the MD5 sum of the string of numbers back, then it knew that the system was vulnerable to think PHP and that they then would send another payload that would try and execute the more malicious command of downloading software or, you know, installing another crypto mine or something like that. So there was a lot of widespread scanning going on. It was mostly originating from China and parts of Japan. It was targeting all industry verticals. So I saw e-commerce sites being scanned for it. I saw tire warehouses being scanned for it. You know, it was sneaker stores, like like any sort of vendor you could think of. It was scanning software companies. It didn't matter. They were just sort of scanning everything that was out on the internet for it, looking for this vulnerable framework. And you know, I realized while, for example, Microsoft 
Microsoft.com might not be running it, Microsoft.com.cn might be running it. So these guys were just scanning pretty much everything under the sun, seeing if there was any sort of you know APJ specific uh, sister site that might be running this framework. And when they run this test code, I mean, it doesn't trigger anything uh, on the system that says anything's gone awry. Right. You just would see it in your logs. You have to look in your logs to find out if your system had been scanned. And if you're running Think PHP on your system that's unpatched, you might want to look for odd looking files in your web server's root directory that don't belong to your website. Honestly, at this point, it's most likely that you've been compromised. So let's dig into some more of the details here. So you establish that folks are looking for this, and it goes a little farther than that. Right. The three most prominent things that I saw were they were attempting to install a Mariah-like IoT botnet. This botnet looked like it was built for Linux systems, and it also utilized ThinkPHP exploit itself. So you had a, a web framework that was vulnerable to a remote command execution or remote code execution, but that had also been ported to a Mirai-like IoT binary, and that was used to distribute the, the, the Mirai botnet code you know, using a web app vulnerability. So they weren't just sticking to Mirai or, I should say, like IoT-specific vulnerabilities, you know, like mo command injection routers or uh, default known passwords. They were actually using this web framework vulnerability to install Mirai-like malware. And then they were also looking for Windows-based systems. So they were scanning systems looking for Windows IIS servers, and they were looking to see they were using PowerShell to download a Windows binary that would scan the network looking for Samba connections. And then it would use Eternal Blue to try and compromise those systems. And they would also, once installed, would use Mimcats to harvest credentials from those systems. So it was a pretty nasty piece of malware. It wasn't just looking to install, say, a Bitcoin miner. It was looking to actually steal credentials and spread itself to other Windows-like systems on the network. And then the other thing that I saw was installing an XMR cryptocurrency miner. So it was also trying to mine Bitcoin on systems that were compromised or that they could compromise. So there was at least three distinct payloads that I saw besides the, the actual scanning for vulnerable systems. And some of the widespread scanning, you know, instead of seeing a MD5 sum of a string of numbers, it was actually installing a shell file or a PHP shell that would evaluate the post request that was uh, encoded in the file name. So it was... You know, there were there were other smaller payloads just to check to see if it existed, but the more major ones were the Mirai IoT botnet, the cryptocurrency model, and the Windows malware. So is your sense with this that this is a widely known about vulnerability that many, many different bad actors are taking advantage of? Right. The actors appear to be specific or at least concentrated in the Asia-Pacific region, and they appear to be scanning not only the Asia-Pacific sites, but also the entire internet as a whole, I think, because they're looking for sites like Microsoft.com.cn that might be utilizing this framework in the website's actual code base. Now, the folks who develop this framework, TopThink, the, the folks who develop ThinkPHP, are they aware of this? Is, has a patch been released? Yeah, they've patched it. It looked like they patched rather quickly, but it doesn't seem to be stopping the actors or bad guys from actually looking for it. Uh, I suspect they just know that systems may not be updated in a timely manner. You know, normally, you know, patch cycles might be slow for websites. So while the vulnerability is relatively new, they're going to do a lot of heavy scanning for it. And what's your sense for how widespread this is? I know the scanning is pretty widespread. I know that. There's about 50,000 downloads of the ThinkPHP framework. I suspect they're probably specific to, you know, the Asia Pacific region, but it looks like the guys looking for this aren't following that rule. They're, they're looking everywhere for it. Interesting. So besides, obviously, you know, patching to make sure that you're running the version of ThinkPHP that's not vulnerable to this, are there other, other ways to protect yourselves against this? Yeah, if you've got a, a web application firewall, I believe most command injection or PHP code injection rules will stop this vulnerability. 
from being exploited. The payload is is pretty straightforward. It's it's usually trying to execute some command or it's passing along some PHP code, which is pretty easily going to trip a WAC rule on a firewall. So if you've got a WAC in front of your website, then most likely it's it's probably been tripped already by this. But it might be good to go look at your logs and see you know. <laughs> what rules might have triggered and look at the payload and look for think PHP in the, in the payload string. And as you say, this is mostly hitting Asia Pacific region. That, that's really where it seems to be concentrated. The vulnerable sites are concentrated there, but this entire internet is being scanned for. Interesting. So any machine on the internet or any website on the internet has probably been scanned for this vulnerability. Our thanks to Larry Cash Dollar from Akamai for joining us. The research is titled, Think PHP Exploit Actively Exploited in the Wild. We'll have a link in the show notes. Thanks to Juniper Networks for sponsoring our show. You can learn more at juniper.net slash security or connect with them on Twitter or Facebook. And thanks to Envale for their sponsorship. You can find out how they're closing the last gap in data security at envale.com. The CyberWire Research Saturday is proudly produced in Maryland out of the startup studios of Data Tribe, where they're co-building the next generation of cybersecurity teams and technology. The coordinating producer is Jennifer Iben, editor is John Petrick, technical editor is Chris Russell, executive editor is Peter Kilpie, and I'm Dave Bittner. Thanks for listening.